This is the brand new iOS 15 that Apple has just announced and it looks pretty similar. But there are a few key changes on the inside and the biggest one is a change in the way you get notifications. Hello guys, I'm Vic with Phone Arena and I have just installed the developer beta of iOS 15 on my iPhone. Let's jump right in and the first thing I have to talk about is notifications. First, they look different. Here's a quick comparison. You now get the app icons on the side rather than a separate line on top. So notifications appear to be more compact. Plus messages from contacts appear with a small image to the side, which is a nice touch and helps you easily notice which notifications come from messenger apps and which come from other apps. And the second change is something Apple calls notification summary. Go into settings, notifications and then scheduled summary to enable it. You can then select the apps you don't want bothering you in real time and you get all their updates grouped as a summary at your preferred time during the day and you can set multiple time periods for that and that's a great way to stay focused and make sure that no apps hijack your attention constantly. And the next big change is focus modes and it's basically a do not disturb mode on steroids. By default you get four different focuses. Do not disturb is just one of them. You have one for work, one personal and one for sleep, at least these are the default ones. And you can switch to a custom focus automatically. For example, you can create a gym focus and switch to a gym focus once you enter the gym. And also you can have it turn off when you leave the gym. Or after an hour, for example, you can set a time period. Anyway, here's how you create a new custom focus. Long press on the new focus button in control center, then create a new one, and you first select which people can reach you with notifications. Next, select which apps can send you notifications. And you can here select to allow important notifications to still reach you. And you can finally automate it. For example, you can select a gaming focus to activate whenever you start playing a game. So this is a great way to keep your work life from disturbing your personal time and I like it. By the way, if you just scroll around in settings and around the interface, do you notice how you get these rounded corners now everywhere? That is another little change compared to iOS 14 and it looks just a bit better in my opinion. And speaking of little changes, you also get one new abstract wallpaper that I'm using right now and this one has a light and dark versions too. New wallpapers don't happen often on iPhones, so hooray for that. Another super cool little change is the time picker, while previously you had to separately type the hour and the minute. So back to the bigger changes, new in the settings app is an app privacy report, which is your one-stop shop where you can see how often apps use the permissions that you've granted them and what external services these apps are communicating with. This way you can see if a certain app is secretly checking your location too often and sending it to other services and it is a big step towards better transparency of how your personal data is getting used. And the photos app is also getting refreshed and my personal favorite feature is just Apple adding an information button so you can easily see the detailed EXIF information for each photo that was previously missing in the photos app so you can now easily see the file name, the size of a photo and the actual camera lens it was taken on which is super useful and it feels like it's finally something that Apple fixed. You also get better memories with support for Apple Music so you can easily add music and photos and videos will sync to the tune and the memory automatically. Next up you have big updates to three key apps, Weather, Maps and Wallet. And my favorite is Weather that gets new full screen weather maps that are super cool and that you previously only got on paid apps. Plus you get a much nicer graphical representation of key weather stats and a bit of text to them to explain them what that means which again is very useful. And and the Maps app is getting super detailed maps from major US cities, but probably even more importantly, it gets this closer look while you're driving with a 3D visualization of complex intersections. You also get to see an up close view of lanes, so you can see bus and taxi lanes, as well as even crosswalks. This should make driving much safer and much better. And this feature is also coming to CarPlay later this year. And the biggest change to the wallet app is that you will be able to store a digital home key now that works with major smart lock providers to unlock your home with your phone, which is again cool. You will also be able to securely and privately scan your ID card, which is again useful. Spotlight search is also getting smarter with detailed cards for a contact so you can easily look up a friend and see the latest images you've shared, messages, calls and all of that right in the Spotlight search app. 
And speaking of apps, Safari is also getting overhauled. By the way, this rolls out to the iPad and Mac OS too. And you now see your address bar at the bottom on your iPhone and it will disappear when you scroll. So it's easily within reach of your thumb. Plus you can now swipe left and right on this address bar to switch between tabs quickly. The other major new feature is tab grouping, which is just what it sounds and will help manage those dozens of tabs you probably have open. I know I do. So for example, if you're shopping for sneakers, you can have all those tabs grouped neatly together and not interfering with your other searches. And my personal favorite feature has got to be the improvements that Apple brings to the health app. You might not have known, but your iPhone with its accelerometer already captures mobility data as you walk. And Apple is building on this with a new metric called walking steadiness. This measures if the gait of an elderly person changes, a major factor that can tell you if a risk of falls increases. And you can view your walking steadiness in the health app and Apple is also giving exercises to improve your steadiness as well. Apple is also bundling trends for how many steps to take, your blood glucose readings and pretty much everything that you can find in the health app now gets a trends view. And finally, you can share health data with a health provider in a secure way. No one else will see this data. And best of all, if you're taking care of your kids or aging parents, they can now choose to share that data with you. So for example, you can see an elevated heart rate alert when an aging parent gets it changes in mobility and a notification will just pop up on your phone and you can give them a call right away which is super nice. Last but not least we have a big update to FaceTime. You can now finally use portrait mode to blur your background and calls and Apple is introducing a feature called SharePlay for shared experiences so you can easily share a song you like with the other person and it will play via their Apple Music app so you can listen to it while you are on a call or you can stream movies or TV shows and kind of watch them together even though you're not and there's also one feature that kind of brings FaceTime to Android and Windows once you start a call you can create a link and send it to your Android buddies and they will be able to join but only via a browser so we tried this out and it didn't work just yet but it's coming in the near future so that's a quick overview of the new and noteworthy features in iOS 15 do you have a favorite new feature so for me, it's just the many little changes that improve the experience and finally having the info button in photos is so helpful. Anyway, check out what's also new in iPadOS and watchOS 8. We have separate videos for those two and subscribe to the channel to help us reach our goal of 2 million subscribers. That would be hugely appreciated. My name is Vic. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.